Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to contain some speed clears of Expert Volk's Wrath starring for Gala Mim. So I'll be sharing some clears I did in public lobbies with this Gala Mim strategy. This strategy became quite popular over this past weekend when Volk's Wrath had double drops available for co-op and in case you missed it, Double Drops are returning to Volk's Wrath for co-op play only on October 25th. So this coming weekend, that Sunday, you'll still be able to participate and get Double Drops if that's something that you want to do. Now, this strategy with 4 Mim was a ton of fun to play, and that's part of why I wanted to make this video. But I've also gotten some requests asking to make videos about more dragon-centric characters now that version 2.0 is out. And so far, this is one of the more fun dragon-centric strategies that I've seen. It's also very consistent at clearing Volk quickly. So on average, I was clearing in around 45 seconds. You'll see in this run, we get a 44 second clear. And I'm basically just going to continue on with this group and do several more runs, which I'll share with y'all. The clear times can vary, but even in the worst case scenario, you're looking at maybe a one minute clear or maybe one minute and 10 seconds if somebody accidentally dies. So yeah, this is a really efficient way to play Volk's Wrath if that's something that you're looking for. And besides that, it's also just cool to see Mim explode in damage on the boss. And uh, even when we make some mistakes, as you'll see in a couple of these runs, it doesn't really take too much longer. So at the core of the strategy is basically trying to ramp and transform very quickly around the time that Volk does Ravenous Claws in the first phase. Ideally, you can do the transformation even before Ravenous Claws, but if you transform him during it, then you won't have to face any purple lines during phase two. If you transform him toward the end of it, you will have to face some purple lines. And if you don't even have your dragons available by the time Ravenous Claws starts, that's usually a bad sign. It will usually tell you that one of the Mims has a more exotic build than what is generally seen for this particular method and uh, probably didn't have skill prep on them. Usually I'll tend to see when players fail to do this run, it's because one of the Mims like runs away during the teleport which tells me that they don't have iframes, which tells me they probably don't have 100% skill prep. So to a degree, you might want to check the builds of people joining your rooms, but you can even work around that as long as y'all are able to play carefully during the Ravenous Claws and successfully dodge it. In that run that lasted a little longer, you may have noticed, I accidentally used my fourth skill, Tropical Breeze, while I had my first skill fully charged, and that fourth skill recharges the first one, so that's definitely a mistake on my part. Anyway, as for the build on this, I alluded to having 100% skill prep, but usually what you want to have, Gala Mars is certainly a staple. Even when you're transformed into Brunhilde, you're still going to get the benefit of Gala Mars in that when your shapeshift ends, all of your skills will be fully charged. So that's one that you absolutely want to have for this. Besides that, for the Worm Prints, you're usually going to see the same three five-star Worm Prints. One of them is going to be... Dragon and Tamer, that just gives you 40% skill damage for Lance units such as Mim. Another one that you're going to see is Brothers in Arms, that's going to give 13% strength that will buff. Usually the way that will play out is the Mims will all run maybe Patia shared skill or Templar Hope shared skill to apply defensive buffs to everyone and thereby trigger a lot of strength double buffs. Now sometimes people get more creative with their builds and uh, don't necessarily do that, so that can be a little bit diminished in effectiveness depending on what people are actually doing. And the third 5 star print slot you'll want is just one that provides 50% skill prep. So think of Gentle Winds, or the Chocolatiers, or a Slice of Dragon Yule. Those are some examples of getting 50% skill prep on your 5 star worm print slots. Besides that, for your two 4 star worm prints, you're going to want an additional 50% skill prep, so that's usually going to be the Rogue's Banquet. And then the last slot is flexible. I've seen two different options used there. One is players will sometimes run Sniper's Allure for Broken Punisher. That's what I tended to run in uh, my grinding. And the other is that sometimes players will run Shapeshift Prep, usually via Dragon's Nest, which is the three-star option. There's a two-star option, Dragon Arcanum, but I tend not to see that too often, so I'll usually see Dragon's Nest. Usually, if even one player in the run has Dragon's Nest available on them, 
that's going to make it consistent so that you're getting your dragon at the time that Volk uses Ravenous Claws. You're not going to end up in a scenario where you're plagued and having to carefully dodge both the traps and the Ravenous Claws AoE. And essentially, that is the power of Mim. She can cleanse her own plague by transforming, and while a dragon, she has immunity to those stun and sleep traps, so she can just run across them and pop them, really without uh, any consequences to her. The skill charge doesn't really matter, because if you're Mars, your skills are going to be fully charged once you come out of your uh, dragon form. But uh, yeah, you can see here, playing very loose, did the Tropical Breeze before Dragon's Claws thing again. I don't know why, I guess my hand's already over there by Sparrow's Guard, so I just used Tropical Breeze. But let's talk now about those shared skills. So it's very flexible. What I've often seen is the first slot will be either Patia or Templar Hope, and the second slot will usually be Summer Cleo. Or, sometimes I've seen players use Sha Wu Zheng. Or, if you don't have too many shared skills available to you, another thing that's not uncommon is sometimes the Mims will just run the Agito skill in their first slot, and their second slot will be like a defensive buff shared skill, such as Templar Hope or uh, Patia's. But uh, yeah, it's pretty open-ended. It's not necessarily the case that uh, only one thing works, but in general, having team-wide effects is going to be a little bit better. Um, so the Templar Hope and Patia buffs are going to be better than the Agito skill if you have access to them, just because everybody's running strength double buff, so you're able to power up the entire team. Tropical Breeze also causes a defense buff, but I think it's on the user, but more importantly, it recharges your first skill, so that is a nice one. That is what I have available, so that's why I'm using it here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. The fastest I think I've gotten was that 39 seconds. I've seen 38. I don't know if you can do this below 30 or even around 30. So if you're really looking to push the envelope as far as speed and this is too slow for you, you may have to either get creative with uh, reforming the strategy a little bit, maybe coordinating with people that you know, or you might have to rely upon a different strategy. But as for me, this ended up being pretty fast, and so I think I played this to the point where I had a thousand gold materials for Volk, the uh, the gold mass that he gives, not the tier 3 master difficulty materials, but the tier 2 ones that mainly drop from Expert. And as far as my farming strategy, basically I just did enough master where I had enough master difficulty materials to build out all the weapon bonuses, build out the flame mana caster, I'd already finished all of the other Flame Agito weapons since Volk's been around since last December. I mean, he's a very old fight, so you probably played him a lot pre-2.0. And uh, yeah, it's mainly the weapon bonuses, the Mana Caster, if you had played him a lot that you would need left. Once I did all the materials for Master, then I started doing this farm on Expert. And once I cleaned out Expert, then I started doing the standard level farm, which this strategy also works pretty well for. So besides this for Gala Mim approach, you know, none of the Worm Prints even rely upon the Dragon's Boon Affinity or things like Dragon's Skill or Dragon's Claws, at least in the Worm Print slot. Besides this, some of the other cool things that you can do with Dragons, right now Kayan has double drops available. That is a pretty fun one to bring Audric, Lathna, or Forte to, at least in expert difficulty. On Master, I'm not going to lie, it's not really as open to Dragon-centric strategies because you need access to Dispel, and that's usually going to occupy one or two team slots just based on the need for that. But uh, on Expert, it's pretty wide open, so you can bring those Dragon Transformation characters and have a lot of fun with them. The thing is, the fights don't really last that long to reliably use Dragon's skill and Dragon's claws. Dragon damage tends to be a little bit more effective in those burst fights and short fights, shapeshift prep even. Ramiel is also a fun dragon to use. Here I'm just going to show off the builds to end the video since I think I'm done with my farming at this point. But uh, other than that, I would say also in uh, the light element, Daiko Kuten ramping has become really awesome if you haven't tried it. The light Agito weapons giving a ton of dragon gauge is a really fun strategy to try out. You can build pretty much any light character as a dragon ramp or dragon centric character. In the water element, of course, you have Zane Freed. We'll see how he plays out upcoming against Master Difficulty Twins Wrath Battle. 
I'm really looking forward to maybe trying him out or maybe Eugene or even Summer Celiera, some of these characters that have Dragon's Claws as a chain co ability. And uh, Wind is the one right now that doesn't really have a lot of dragon ramp happening, but uh, yeah, it's been pretty fun getting to actually use dragons and have them be decent to strong in version 2.0. Let me know what you think about dragon ramping and this MIM strategy in the comments below. That is going to do it for this video, everyone. So thank you as always for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.